Hello, all my friends out there. I promised you that I would do a video on cameos, which I've been collecting for a very long time now. And I thought I'd let you in on some of the ways you can tell fine cameos versus modern cameos and the many different types of cameos that are out there. Um, so most cameos are made in Italy, the ones that are made of shell. They were carved in Italy. They are made from a shell called the helmet conch. And uh, they're made, many of them are carved in Naples and also a place called Toro del Greco. And uh, it's interesting how they harvest the shell and they cut away the exterior, which is a white, whitish looking. And inside there's a layer of tan. And then they take that piece with a wet saw and they cut away little ovals that they have marked. Then the piece is put on a type of stick with a clay that holds it down and the artist begins to draw whatever comes to his mind. And little by little, he's, he etches away with, a, with several different types of tools. This is the same method they have done since the Greek and Roman times. So the level of carving can be from what I call student level all the way to master museum pieces. Modern ones are, are very beautiful. Um, there is also a factory in Germany that's doing some gem carving in the blue and white, and those are very modern. They're lovely, but they are modern, and I'm more focused on things that are older. The other thing about shell cameos is when you're purchasing one, you should be able to see the image from behind. Um, all shell cameos have a concave interior. That's because it was made from shell. Here's a piece where the carver actually used the shape, the lump of the shell. See that? He used that in the way he carved the lady. And this is um, what they call a bac bacante. And she is a follower of the god Bacchus, the god of wine. When you see the women with the leaves and the grapevines in their hair, those are the Bacantes. And here's another really beautiful, um, she's almost, to me, she's like a warrior woman, but she's also a Bacante. Um, and they mostly have, let me, let me start again and say that a lot of early cameos are of Greek gods and goddesses. So you need to study up on your mythology so you know what you're looking at. But um, really masterpiece ones have more than one person subject in them. Oh, it's like the birth of Venus. The, um, there could be uh, all types of mythical Leda and the swan. Uh, many, many fantastic uh, subject matter, all from Greek mythology. Um, so anyway, getting back to this. Um, this one here is quite large. It's set in white gold. Uh, I believe I took this to a jeweler and had a bail put on it. Now, let me show you. Here's my alt lamp. You see that? You can see right through and also see the shape. See the shape of the shell? Okay. This is uh, a more modern, probably 19, I'd say 50s. But they call these Javier, which means um, that she's wearing a decorative element, either usually a diamond necklace or sometimes even a little di tiny diamond earrings. Um, I, I don't really care for those. They're, they're cool, um, but it's just not something I'm, you know, absolutely searching for. But here's a magnificent lava cameo. So this is an example of another substance they use to carve cameos with. This is extremely fine. 
Um, I would say uh, 1860s. Obviously, I don't think it was ever even worn. Has the old C clasp. But look at the detail in her face and in the hair and in the fruit, even on her necklace. Look at that. These are very delicate and should be stored in a separate compartment, which she is. Um, you don't want anything to scratch or touch this because they are fragile. Lava is a porous substance and therefore it has to be very carefully taken care of. And I do, I keep this one in a separate box. Um, here's a cameo I bought when I visited Naples. So as you can see, it's a more modern subject. Um, I think she's very beautiful still. I did get her from a cameo carver, so I have all her paperwork. You can still see the carving. See how it's right there where my thumb is? Um, she's set in 18 karat gold. Let me hold her up to the light. She has her pendant. See? Really amazing. So when you go to Naples, here's the funny thing. They take you to the cameo factory. And, of course, you know, there's a lot of garbage cameos. And they're all priced like $500, crazy prices. Um, I just ignore that. Uh, I know what a good cameo is and what a crappy one is. And I, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't pay money for something like that. Here's a very early cameo as well of a Roman woman. And she's got a headband in her hair. Another person I heard about says, oh, you know, uh, the modern ones have the perky noses and the other ones have the more Roman style nose, well, like this one has the more perky nose. It's a fine, good cameo, good carving, but yeah, she kind of has that perky nose. Here's one, uh, again, set in, in a, a low carat gold, 10 carat gold, and uh, I would say she's about 1930, and uh, she's very nicely done. Not, a, not super fantastic, but nicely done. Now, this is a different substance. This is pink conch shell. So you see she has a distinct, instead of the amber tone, she has that pink and white. This is an early piece. It's definitely Victorian. Look at the detail of her hair. How beautiful her, her gown. And yes, she has a sort of Roman nose. I also had a gold bezel, um, you know, loop put on it because I wanted to wear it. Let's see if we could see. Yep, there you go. See that, how you could see through it? Now notice it's also concave. That's set in gold. Here's another substance they later used towards the 30s and 40s. Uh, this is a Victorian revival in uh, black glass. I, I love this necklace. Um, I, I want to show you the sides, our little strawberries. It's absolutely just, I don't know, I just love this piece. Has a book chain um, necklace style. Let me, but look at the little clasp on top. Has the coral. I, I, I added that dangle with coral and onyx because it was missing but one of my favorite pieces. It's, it's Victorian Revival. Here's a piece that is in Gouda Percha, which is like a, um, or vulcanite, which is a early type of rubber, which could be molded. Again, this is a lady in profile, and it is a locket. So it's um, very cool. And it's on a old morning style chain this, uh, this cameo belonged to Olivia de Havilland. I bought this from her estate in Carmel, California. And it is absolutely beautiful. This is the Madonna or the Virgin Mary. I just love the radiating um, halo set in 14 karat gold. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Okay. I'll show you another early cameos. This one is of Psyche. And she is uh, the wife of Cupid, the god of love. And um, it's absolutely incredibly done. It isn't a low-grade gold. I don't care about that. But the cameo carving itself, as you can see, is absolutely amazing. Here is Cupid himself stringing his bow. Another Victorian piece. And look at the beautiful flower arrangement, like fruit and flowers. Just beautifully done. It does have a crack, which is visible right there. But um, I was able to get it for a very reasonable price, so I didn't care. I think it's a, still a very beautiful example of a well-done cameo. Here is a cameo ring set in sterling silver of the god Hermes, or Mercury. You can know that by his winged helmet and by the caduceus behind his shoulder. And I bought this to honor my husband. Mercury is the god of doctors and medicine. So this is set in sterling. It's very well done. One of my favorite pieces. Okay. Now we move to hardstone cameos. Hardstone is usually made from agate or uh, an onyx called sardonyx. Whoops. And um, it's black, usually with a white. This almost has an opalescent sheen on this ring. I believe this ring came from England. And I have uh, somewhere. Oh, here. I have a, another Hearthstone cameo of a lady that looks like, almost like Elizabethan, with that ruffled collar. Very, very beautiful. And she's in green gold. Uh, the accents around her on the four corners are sort of a green gold. Um, here's a cameo in its original box probably purchased as a uh, Grand Tour of Europe piece. This is the goddess Psyche. You can always know it's Psyche by the butterfly wings as well. And this is an absolutely beautiful piece. And that's the original box it came in. Here is a, I would say this is 1930s. And it's a stylized piece. Uh, yeah, she does have the perky nose. But this is the goddess Athena, and she wears the helmet. Um, she is said to have sprung from the head of her father, Zeus. So that's supposed to be like his face. Um, and this is, I would say, a 1930s cameo, but it is a shell cameo for sure. Very nice rope braiding on the bezel. And here's a piece that I found, unbezeled, <clears throat> very beautiful. Love the coloration, how the carver uh, left in some of the colors, natural colors of the helmet shell, um, and the beautiful rolls in her hair. Um, actually, Greek and Roman women did wear very elaborate hairdos. This is an early cameo, and I bezeled it using real pearls and uh, 24 karat gold beads and real carnelian. And this is from my personal collection. And then I put the chain on it. Here is uh, another cameo ring. Uh, this came from England. This is not um, a super elaborate cameo, but it is a nice one. A lot of rings, for some reason, are missing the noses. Here's another one, almost really similar to that, but still very pretty. I would say probably 1920. Here's another one. These are all set in low grade gold, like nine carat to 10 carat. This one's pretty nice though. Love the detail of her hair. 
Here's another substance used for cameos, which is coral. Now coral is, um, I think it's pretty much banned in a lot of uh, countries because of the overfishing. So this is an old Victorian one, and this is um, sort of that peachy, corally color, and it is also set in a low-grade gold. But just to show you, cameos came in many different substances. There's mother of pearl ones. Um, I don't have one out, but there are abalone ones. There are a lot of different, different substances. I'm pretty much um, in love with the shell. Now these are painted pieces. They are not cameo. So just trying to show you, this is not a cameo, but they are beautiful and they are painted. The way you can tell a painted piece from a transfer printed piece is use a jeweler's loop. And if you can see the brush strokes, it's painted. If you don't see brush strokes, it's just a transfer printed. A lot of the ladies, um, lovers in a field, uh, the shepherdess, they call it, those are all transfer printed. They were made by the thousands. Anyway, hope you uh, learned something and hope you enjoyed looking at my collection. I really love uh, cameos and every day you learn something new. And I hope your collecting experience is enhanced and I hope you have a great day. Take care, God bless.